Okay, Steeler fans, it's time for the mailbag segment. I always say courtesy of Oklahoma Joe's because Oklahoma Joe's, Joe's does right by me. They have hooked me up with their one of their smokers, the Bandera Vertical Chamber Smoker. I love that thing. So I always said, hey, I'm going to give them a shout out. If you want to go to Oklahoma Joe's website, want to buy anything, accessories, the only thing you can't get this discount for is if you get the Tahoma. That is like, a, it's over a thousand dollar grill smoker. Uh, they, they said you can't get a discount on that, but everything else, use the code Rider Die 10 and you'll save yourself 10%. Let's get this mailbag started. Believers, the Rider Die crew poll of the week. He said, with both Russ and Fields on one year deals next year, I expect the starting quarterback to be Russ, Fields, a rookie, or a free agent trade. Those were the four options. I went with Justin Fields. I went with Justin Fields. I thought that. The reason why I chose Justin Fields there is based on the fact that I think the Steelers are smart. They can kind of see what they have and and build something around him, maybe something that he never had in Chicago. We'll see how it plays out. So far, that is the leading vote-getter on the poll of the week. Let's go to Jeff Coons, our buddy up north. He said, Roman Wilson is an intriguing addition to the Steelers' offense. What would, quote-unquote, success look like to you at year's end? Is success based solely on stats, or are there other factors you'd consider? There are other factors. Stats are important. You're a receiver. Like you're going to be based off of your ability to accrue statistics, receptions, yards after the catch, all that stuff. Of course, touchdowns. I'm also going to want to see how do the Steelers utilize Roman Wilson in certain areas? Is his usage increasing? Is he being trusted more? All that stuff matters. That's what success is to me. So for instance, if the Steelers come out, and they, they only have two receivers. They're going to run the football, and they have Roman Wilson out there. That is success. A rookie that's going out there and being asked to block, and he's getting the job done, that's as much success as a rookie as it is if he's out there catching passes. Keep that in mind. Let's go to Mark Bergen, host of the Believe in Steelers podcast. Mark asks, do you believe the Steelers' number two wide receiver is already on the roster? This has been an ongoing question. All offseason, since the... NFL draft and since free agency has died down, I'm going to go with yes, but I'm going to say that's because the trade that they potentially make or the player that they pick up, I don't see it being as big name of a player as you might think it is. That's going to suck for a lot of people to hear. But for me, I think that the thoughts of a Brandon Ayuk, a Debo Samuel, a DK Metcalf, I think those are pipe dreams at this point. And I think the Steelers might say, you know what, we're going to roll with what we have. Who is that number two wide receiver? I'm not ready to answer that yet. Let's go to Genuine Washing Machine. He said, position outside of the obvious, quarterback, wide receiver, and cornerback that you are most concerned about. I'm going to, this is him. I'm going defensive line personally because of Cam's injury plus age, plus Larry O's injury history and inconsistency. Well, Washing Machine, I'm going to go with you. Outside of those three positions that you mentioned, mentioned quarterback, wide receiver, and cornerback, I'm going to go defensive line. For all the reasons that you just listed, I just don't feel like the Steelers have invested a lot into that defensive line. If Larry Ogunjobi could have, a, a, I guess, more of a 2023 season, I'm sorry, 2022 season, his first year in Pittsburgh, he had a good year. Last year, not so much. Let's go to Tom East. Jeff, knowing Arthur Smith is a run-heavy type coach, I see Connor Hayward's use as a fullback on the horizon. Plus, the fact he's able to catch the ball makes him a dual threat. What are your thoughts? Then he said, hashtag Ryder Tag Crew for Life. Thank you very much, Tom. I see Connor Hayward being used as a fullback. I have to, before I can say that I like it or I'm trusting in this, I have to wonder is he able to block? Is he actually able to block? If he can't block, you can't be a fullback. So Connor Hayward's not the biggest guy, definitely not the build of a tight end. Definitely not the build of a fullback. If he can't actually block, then it's going to be useless. So we'll have to see if it works. Let's go to King Tibbs. Hey, Jeff, love the site. You guys are awesome. The FFSN ship steered by Captain Jeff Beard. Very nice. Thank you very much. He said, I was wondering if you could explain what personnel suits up for seven on seven and nine on seven drills. So I'll have to ask Coach KT Smith exactly what they do on these drills. But seven on seven, essentially, you have a center, you have a quarterback typically. Sometimes a quarterback does start with the ball. You then have basically wide receivers, and then they echo that on the other side. Uh, it's really odd. Sometimes you have a tight end as an option. 
there's just no defense really like the defense is out there, but they're not really pressing. They're not hitting. They're just trying to knock the ball down, trying to get interceptions. I don't know. They, they do it a lot, so they must value it, but I just don't know. Let's go to bagels and bong ribs. He said some of the concern of not acquiring another wide receiver is the idea that Pickens will always be double teamed and thus be ne- negated as a target. How valid is this concern? It's valid. It's very valid. Every single wide receiver the Steelers have had that is a legitimate number one receiver has always gotten bracketed. Go back to when Antonio Brown was in his prime and the Baltimore Ravens would triple team him. They would have the underneath corner run with him. They'd have the safety over the top and they'd even shade a, whether it was a linebacker, a safety or an inside corner his way as well. They would bracket him to the umpteenth degree. That's what they do. So George Pickens is going to have to show that if they were relying on him to be that guy, he's going to have to beat double teams. He's going to have to beat bracketed coverages because that's where he's going to live for hopefully a long time in Pittsburgh. Let's go to Lumberzak94. Jeff, what would you prefer if you had to choose? McCormick at right guard in 2026, James Daniels walks. Or McCormick at left guard in 2026, let Sayamalu finish out his contract. I'd prefer this is Lumber Zach 94. I'd prefer lad, the latter and try to keep the line young, keep McCormick at his natural position long term. So Sayamalu is getting up there in age. Sayamalu is a good player. No one's saying he isn't. Sayamalu was let go by Philadelphia for a reason. Like they could have signed him back and they chose not to. I would agree with you. I would agree. I think James Daniels, people think that people always want to find a reason to make their theory or hypothesis correct. So when they signed Mason McCormick or drafted Mason McCormick, I should say, everyone just assumed James Daniels' contract is up after this year. That's why they got him. Maybe not. Maybe they see Mason McCormick, fourth-round draft pick, out out of South Dakota State, mind you, as let's get this kid ready to take over for Sayamalu. In the meantime, he can be the interior depth piece. He can snap the ball if needed. He can play left and right side. Get him ready for that. And then when Sayamalu's done, Then we part ways with Sayamalu. McCormick's ready to go, and Daniels, who's still really young, gets his next contract. I could see that. I would like that better, if I'm being honest. Let's go to Steeler Fan 69. He always provides some comedic relief here. He said, Cardi B has a sister that is a famous fitness instructor. Famous fitness instructor. Her name is Cardi O. Very nice. Next, what famous celebrity has an obsession with breakfast cereal? Reese with her spoon. What kind of car does a sheep drive? A Lamborghini. And last, sheep can't afford a Lambo. They just take an Uber. Great stuff, as always. I'm going to give that a round of applause. I love the Cardi B cardio. That was a good one. All right, Brandon Diaz asked several questions. He said, uh, number one, I'm confused by Cam holding out. Wasn't, Wasn't it known he was already planned to extend him? I'm not calling this a hold out. Okay, these are voluntary workouts. He's choosing to not go. I would fully expect Cam Hayward to be a mandatory mini camp in June. It's so next one. What can we expect from OTAs? Talked about that in the first half. Hope you enjoyed it. There's a lot to glean. There's a lot to just say. Let's not jump to conclusions. Next, why on earth are the Christmas games so early? Why not move them back? Uh, Brandon said it's 11 a.m. kickoff where he is. So obviously he's on the West Coast. Yeah, I don't know. That was interesting. I thought for sure they would do a 4.30 or 4 o'clock and an 8. Them doing a 1 and a 4, very odd. I don't know why they did that. Last question from Brandon. What games are you looking forward to watch this season? All of them. I can't wait to see all of them. I love watching the Steelers play, and I can't wait to watch all those games. It's going to be a lot of fun. All right. Uh, Chad Skoma said, what can we see from the Steelers after June 1st? Cuts, trades, etc. Maybe a trade. I don't see them cutting any player post June 1st for cap reasons. And the last question from James said, Hey Jeff, other than the traditional meats you've smoked, have you ever done anything untraditional things such as dips, pasta dishes, pizzas, et cetera. And if you have, how have any of those items come out? So one of the, this is when you turn and then, <laughs> this is funny because Rob, um, Rob Sprantz, who was on my Monday morning conversation, he said this and I have always believed it. There comes a point when whether you're smoking something or grilling something, it just turns into an outdoor oven. Like that's all you're using it for. Uh, I have done pizzas. They taste really good. The the, the dough, that's tough. It takes time 
But what you want to do is you want to do the dough and you're going to put the dough as it's sticky because if you're making dough, not like you're buying a pre-made dough and you want to put it onto the grill, it's going to heat up. It's going to firm. You need to flip it once and take it off. You put your toppings on, you put it back on just to let the cheese melt. It warms up, take it off, cut it. and You're good to go. Tastes great. It is time consuming. It can get a little messy. I've also done, this was awesome. I, I've, we actually do these again. Now that I think about it. They are called, we call them big kid grilled cheese sandwiches. And so what you do is you can do this smoking it. Uh, it's going to have a good flavor, but you're not going to get the crunch. What I did is I took uh, one of the grates from my grill and I covered it with aluminum foil. And that way that the flames never directly hit the grilled cheese. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to get it crispy. I wanted to have it be nice. We got a whole bunch of different cheeses. And then you have to get a, get a brick, cover that brick in aluminum foil. And what you do is you put it, put the, uh, the, the big kid grilled cheeses on the, the grill plate that has the aluminum foil on it, then take the grill, the, the brick, put it on top of it. So it squishes it. All that cheese melts. Oh my gosh. So, so good. Really, really good. I have done some other stuff. Um, I've also done different types of meat. We've done uh duck definitely have grilled, smoked a, uh, a turkey before. So love doing, trying different things. Maybe I'll try some of those things this summer and share those experiences on social media. But James, thank you very much for the question. Thanks to all of my rider dad die crew for the questions. I do appreciate every single one of you. In case you're wondering, how do I get my question answered? It is easy. You don't have to follow me. You just have to find me on Twitter and X at J Hartman, H A R T M A N underscore P I T. Every Tuesday morning, I put out the question, find it. All you have to do is reply. Reply to the tweet. I will answer that tweet live on the show on Wednesday. That's it. That's it. That's how you get it done. So on Friday, we've got another show coming up. All bets are off with Jeremy Betts should be back. Talking about OTAs. Week one is in the books. We'll see where we are at that point. In the meantime, you know how we finish this up. Be safe, be kind, and God bless. Have a great rest of your week, everyone. We'll see you on Friday. Go Steelers.